The 90s X-Men can only be summed up in one word, iconic. X-Men was a flagship comic book of Marvel at the time. This was right before the comic book industry crashed because the comic industry got really greedy and started pretending that every comic book was a collector's item and people thought that they'd be worth more than stock markets or gold. It was a real stupid time in the 90s. Jim Lee and Chris Claremont's X-Men number one sold the most comic books like ever. That was because there was like a hundred variant covers. <laughs> Video games starring the X-Men flowed like wine for over a decade. There was X-Men by Konami that was in 92. Welcome to die. The White Queen welcomes you to die. <laughs> I am Magneto, master of magnet. Yeah! There was X-Men. Children of the Atom in 94, and the hits just kept coming. X-Men vs. Street Fighter, that was a massive hit for them. That spawned the Marvel vs. Capcom franchise that dominated the fighting game industry for years to come. So naturally, with all that juice, there would be a TV show. Marvel did try to make an X-Men TV show earlier than the 90s, but it never made it past a pilot episode. This was back in 1989, with the now famous Pride of the X-Men. You can find it on YouTube. The animation that is now over 35 years old in this show is better than what we're getting with X-Men 97. It was developed by Marvel and New World Television. It was animated by Toei Animation, which explains why it looks so good, because they were killing it with Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon and so on. Needless to say, Marvel fell on hard times. On brand for Marvel. Margaret Loesch was the former head of Marvel Productions at the time before they went belly up. She then became a major player for Fox Kids. So she turned around and bought the TV rights for the X-Men. And I told my boss, we're gonna, I'm gonna order X-Men. And he said, uh-uh. And I was really taken aback. I said, well, I thought I had green light authority here and I could make the creative decisions. He said, Margaret, I think that X-Men is a mistake. Why do you believe in it so much? And I told him all the reasons. He says, well, I don't know, I don't really. He says, and I don't see any enthusiasm from you. And I said, well, my enthusiasm is for the shows, not for, <laughs> I really believe in it. And um, so he, he didn't, he thought it was a mistake. He thought that Again, a comic book, maybe it was too esoteric. I can't remember all the reasons he didn't like it. But he said to me, okay, Margaret, I, I'll, I, you do have the, I'll let you do it, but you understand if it doesn't work, it's not going to work for us together here. He said, are you willing to put that much behind the show? And I said, yeah. Then we got the Night of the Sentinels two-part pilot episode that blew everybody's nuts off, which led to X-Men the Animated Series that dropped in 1992 to major fanfare, obviously. Like TV shows of this era, it was a kid's show, but it was more adult-themed and complex than what we get now. You won't be getting Professor Xavier making Magneto relive the horrors of the Holocaust in today's made-for-modern audiences milk toast world. No, no. Don't make me see. Xavier, I can't. Stop it. Stop it. No, Magneto. You will stop. Uh, uh, no. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, oh, my God. Stop. That type of episode might give today's Zoomers PTSD. For many years, people wondered what could have been had X-Men not been canceled in 97. Flash forward to the year 2021. Disney teases the X-Men 97, a show that picks up where the animated series left off. Honestly, you're better off reading the comic books. November 2021 is when reality reared its ugly head. When the original voice actor for Jubilee rejected her role, I knew that there was diversity, equity, and inclusion in the water. Data Racer collected tweets from the lead writer and showrunner of the X-Men 97. There are two terms that perfectly surmise this woman's existence on Twitter. Woke scold and radical left. Lead writer and producer for the X-Men reboot on Disney Plus is having a meltdown about Kyle Rittenhouse. Calls him a racist white supremacist and thinks all 20 year old white males are potential mass shooters. You might think that this tweet is hyperbolic, but it's not. 
I will only read you her most wild takes, because we ain't got all day for this. Uh, here in this tweet, you can see that she's ranting about Rittenhouse. Get a life, lady. Who cares? And in the next tweet, we have, uh, Can I finally share that I've truly never believed that I'm the writer and supervisor producer for the new X-Men animated TV show, 97. Strap in, bub, you're in for a hell of a ride. I'm sure I'm in there for diversity, equity, and inclusion, gender, non-binary, pronouns, and everything in between. Let's read what else she has to say. It's to the point where every time I pass a 20-something lone white male, I feel the need to ask them, please not shoot people, just in case. Lady, are you out of your mind? When I see a group of black guys I know to cross the street. Wow, he went too far with the truth. If you're blissfully unaware, white rage is trending because folks are trying to keep critical race theory from being taught. A total normal and chill desire. No rage there. Just daisies and white supremacy. What are you talking about, lady? Let me tell you, critical race theory turned my sister into a monster. <laughs> if it walks like a duck, cracks like a duck, and probably armed white supremacists who puts government officials in jeopardy in order to, yes, what you said, they're terrorist traitors, quack, quack. It's over. We are screwed. Look at the insanity. Literally, this person is in charge of the X-Men cartoon, and it's your typical, really far left nut job that just screams about every conspiracy theory that white people are in control of everything. Last I check, a white man isn't even entitled to his opinion, <laughs> let alone the country. We got stuff on Donald Trump. This is, oh God, I can't. Don't use the Black Lives Matter tag if in your Instagram blackout if you're white. Do amplify voices. The point is for us to be silent and listen, not silence the whole movement and prevent information from spreading. Ah, yes. Like when entire neighborhoods were burned to the ground. The message was clear. Chaos reigns supreme. Anybody remember the de-autonomous zone and all the crime that went on there? Listen, you bigot. Closer look at my shirt from today. The galaxy was made for you and me. Star Wars hashtag resist. It's always the people that are part of the empire that always think they're, re they're resistance. I'm part of the resistance. I'm going to be writing and directing a cartoon and shaping the minds of children. I have no power. In this one, the woman, uh, she goes from basically saying that her top four animated cartoons, none of them were the X-Men in November of 2020. But when November 2021 rolled around, X-Men was number one. X-Men animated series was my Saturday. I was not a kid who woke up early, but this show shot me out of bed to see what happened after to be continued so I could swoon over Rogue and Marvel at the storytelling. I still believe it is the definitive X-Men adaptation. Gender to me is similar to religion. You may grow up with it and it can give guidance, community and identity and perspective. Some may find peace within this framework, but some just don't need it. And the more you hold up either as absolute truth, the more you limit your world. She's now equating gender to religion because the left has succeeded in getting rid of religion. And you see how well things are going. Nobody has a moral compass. The next thing is to take out nature. <laughs> now that we have finished God, we must get rid of mother nature. Unless we're trying to sell you on electric cars. Stop out. This video is going to get me in so much trouble. In this uh, portion of tweets, she basically points out how she will be offering jobs to people that follow her or something. If you post below, I wrote a tweet. Black folks looking for work or who want to break in, I promise to make this more regular post going forward. But the, the catch is, if you want to get work in the industry, you better be black. While I can't read scripts right now, I will also start to make it available to someone, anyone who isn't white, het, cis, is interested in. This is not something many find helpful or need right now, but I will offer it to those who are looking for it. Uh, some guy goes, so as soon as I said you would have to rewrite Batman to be black, I started thinking about how I would do it, and here's what I have. Green light signal! In March of 2023... One of the other writers of the show said some things that confirmed my bias that I already had towards the show after our lovely lady here. As part of the discussion, Dave Mayo said, I came up with a pitch. I pitched to Kevin Feige and you know him and Brad could not have been more supportive and also just encouraging to make sure we got it right. I think one of my favorite parts was like they were truly interested in like what? my experience as a black gay man was and how it was going to inform the story we were telling. And that to them was like, that is how we're going to make this authentic, he revealed. Yes. You know, 
Every episode of X-Men as a child, I thought to myself, oh man, I can't wait to get the gay experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're never going to get an episode where Nightcrawler talks about Christianity. Oh, our reasons to be thankful. What about the monastery? A great tragedy. But it was only stone and mortar. The foundation God has built in our hearts can never be destroyed. Man, I don't get you. Here, yeah. I've marked a few passages you may find rewarding. Remember, Herr Logan. Different eyes. Ah, Perry. Back in the civilized world. I don't know. Those quiet little monks were starting to grow on me. Face it, Shell. Those monks kid themselves. We aren't our own in this world. Life is random. Deal you a full house or a busted flush. What'd I say? <sighs> what if he's right? What if there is nothing else? I will give thanks to you, O Lord. For though you were angry with me, your anger turned away and you comforted me. I will trust and will not be afraid. This one piece from his Comic-Con panel was all that I needed to know. Instead of basing the show off of comics by Chris Claremont, they seem to be doing their own thing, which seems to be on brand for recent Marvel writers because none of them read the comic books and they admit it in interviews like it's a casual thing. Like, <laughs> you know why Thor sucks? As I never read a comic book. <laughs> Did you ever read the, did you, did you, you, you no. haven't read the comic book. When the DVD comes out, I'm going to read a Thor comic book and just see where we went wrong. Get <laughs> him out of here. Hmm? Get him out of here! I just want to see the comic books come to life. I don't want to see the machinations and Tumblr fan fictions of radical Twitter progressives who think they're under some sort of dark leadership in the country, but it's modern media. They can't give you anything without preaching to you. On February 15th, the sneak peek of the X-Men trailer was revealed. The X-Men cartoon dropped and the normies were all abuzz to see it. People who were really fans of the X-Men cartoons and had fond memories of the 90s series picked apart the trailer like uh, something you pick apart. The trailer starts off with a bunch of member berries. Hey, remember Scott Summers and Jean Grey picture with a Wolverine meme? Look, it's the Colossus toy from the 80s or 90s. Remember those? Ooh, remember Calypso and the Morlocks? There's also a screen cap where you see the mutant fashion show. This is a callback to the more modern Marvel with the Hellfire Gala comic series that started in 2021. With celebrities, and I use the term loosely with Patton Oswalt being featured in the comic book, and Eminem of all things. And I'm not even joking. I don't understand this. Modern Marvel makes no sense, and it's almost as depressing as DC Comics. But you do get to see the Daily Bugle newspaper in it. Hence, it's Spider-Man existing in this universe, and Eddie Brock, which means Venom because there's a news piece on him. Who cares? You might have also noticed a Voldemort-looking character. Well, that's Morph. He's back and he's non-binary because that was a thing in 1997. Remember all the non-existent non-binary people back in 1997? <laughs> yeah, neither do I. It's almost like it's a modern day thing interjected into your piece of nostalgia bait. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. If we call back to the lead writer's tweets on gender, Odds are, this brilliant idea was hers. The X-Men animated series had dark undertones and Morph being traumatized by almost dying and then being brainwashed, manipulated, and controlled by Mr. Sinister was a major plot point for the character. Oh well, he's lighthearted and non-binary now, you bigot. His new face is a callback to the Changeling, aka Kevin Sydney, which I believe is one of his original names or aliases. Go Google it if you want. I don't care enough to remember because I wasn't a Morph fan. How do you like that? But Morph in the TV show was an alternate reality version of the comic book version, if we really want to split hairs. If you Google a little bit, you'll find his original face matches that of Morph in the animated television show. And if you look up his comic biology or bio, you will see that he clearly identifies as male. But then again, with all that information, it doesn't mean anything because these people literally had Gambit 
kinetically charge Wolverine's claws that are attached to his adamantium bones. The moment his claws come into contact with something else, his flesh would be blown off of his body because that's what Gambit's power does. Every X-Men fan knows this, but I guess since they opted for Bishop and Worf rather than Colossus and Archangel, they had to come up with some new cool team move because they can't use the fastball without Colossus. But the real crime in all of this is the Southern Belle Rogue. They took my girl's ass away. X-Men 97 Hank Hilled Rogue. I'll never forgive this. <sighs> they turned Rogue into a goddamn plank of wood with a Joker-sized chin. Why? I don't know. X-Men fans online began to meme uncontrollably and lament the loss of Marvel's best girl. It's clear this show will have the message well and truly in place, and I'm not looking forward to it. So far, all the indications are there for another mediocre Disney Plus show with more focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion than staying true to the original source material. Another hollow piece of content relying heavily on nostalgia while Mickey Mouse parades around in a Wolverine skin suit. Let's go, bub! To me, my X-Men! The Archer-style 2.5D animation lacks depth and soul. It's like any other modern adaptation we are subjected to. A shadow of its former glory. A quick flip, a fast cash grab, and some fan bait on a string, praying we're stupid enough to be fooled again. 